we'll start at the table and then start uh, down um, to my left. <laughs> Tom Nelson in Michael County. Um, sure, Adam, CEO, in the CEO of your disease. Bonnie Ashley, the Attorney's Office in Richmond and General Counsel to so DRT3. Lincoln Saunders, representing the city of Richmond. Todd Jarrett, uh, Henrico County. Dan Schmidt, Henrico County. Barb Smith, Chesterfield County. Dave Anderson, Chesterfield County. Jim Engle, Chesterfield County. So, Tony Barrett, the Director of the Maine is DRTC. Mike Frontiero, Director of Communications and Marketing. All right, thank you. Uh, again, good morning. We're going to move into our public comments. Um, Mike, we're going to turn it over to you. And I know we have, we have quite a few writing comments, and then there, there may be some persons here to speak uh, with us. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. I'm Mike Frontiero, Director of Communications and Marketing. The public notice, meeting agenda, and agenda attachments for the December 20th, 2022 standing meeting of the boards of DRTC, RideFinder, and Old Dominion Transit Management Company were posted on December 15th, 2022 at ridedrtc.com. Per the meeting notice, all written comments received via email by me prior to 5 p.m. on the day preceding the meeting were provided to all members of the board the night before the meeting. A read during the public comment period of the meeting by staff following the two minute speaking limit and will be included in the minutes of the meeting. Also, per the meeting notice, this meeting is being live streamed on YouTube. This meeting, I received 17 comments in writing in support of continuing zero fares and building a north south DRT. Board members have had the opportunity to read them all, and because our time is short, I'll read the same. Cesar Carvalho. I live in the Woodland Heights neighborhood of South Side Richmond. I am in full support of the north south DRT, DRT with frequent service, dedicated lanes, and sheltered stations. Transit is a pillar of an economically resilient and flourishing region, as each dollar spent on transit brings $5 in economic benefits and is necessary for us to build safe and thriving communities. Being so close to Sims Avenue, I see on a daily basis the impacts that our focus on single cars has on people. It's a dangerous corridor and only a convenient, predictable transit service to help mitigate our dependence on cars. Not only are there obvious benefits due to reduced emissions, but decreased gasoline consumption reduces our dependence on foreign oil. There is also an equity component. 90% of those on public assistance do not own a car. Many, many elderly folks and those with disabilities also cannot drive. A second BRT could double their accessible world. Dan Miltenberger. Oh, Mike. Yes, How many sir. have you read so far? One. Okay. And you which one read one more? I read one more than one more. Okay. And then the total, you, had, you said you had how many? Uh, total of 17. 17 for well, us. I'll read only a total of two. Okay. And the total 17 are for 16 are for um zero fare. Zero fare. And 16 are for zero fare and one is for North South Pier. All right, but the 16 for zero fare are all in support. Correct. Keep it. Okay. Dan Miltenberger. I am a second year mechanical engineering student at BCU. Keeping the buses fare free is really important to me because of the countless adventures I've gotten to go on throughout 
the city. I'm an out of state student. When I explore the city, I either walk, run, bike, or ride the bus. Because of the free fares, I've gone from campus to Rocket Landing, Martin Luther King Middle School for after school mentorship programs, and to the BMFA for a first aid. And we're still together. I did the classic yawn and put your arm around her on a bent bus bench waiting for our ride back. The one time I was glad the bus was running late. <laughs> but of course, the benefits of your affair go beyond some young college student going out on a date. It extends to people who need to get to work. It extends to people who need to run errands. It extends to families who want to go for a walk along the river. From personal experience, it extends to a student getting groceries for the week. From a monetary standpoint, I've gone to Perrytown directly because of the quick and free transportation. I love the watermelon festival. Students don't mind spending the cash on board games or thrifted clothes and carry, but they want, they may balk at a fee there and, and a fee back. It's like buying something online, but you change your mind once you see the shipping. Smart online retailers will make shipping free, and I'll use that service much more. And GRTC is doing a great job following this example. I've had a lot of great memories in the city, and they all had a bus ride as well. From the moment I arrived at BCU, I got off the train from Philly with a backpack and a duffel and took the bus to Monroe Park. I'm glad I didn't have to drop my duffel and turn my backpack upside down looking for loose change. I firmly believe that we should match the grant to continue this wonderful experience of your affair in our city. We will now open it up to public comment. I believe we have one speaker. You may come forward. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the board. Uh, my name is Tudu Oladipo. I am a student at the University of Richmond School of Law, and I'm here to speak on support of uh, Zero Fair. I'm, I moved to Richmond in the summer of 2021, and right off the bat, I arrived at the train station, and I was able to take a bus all the way down to Willowlawn. And that the Zero Fair has really made my experience here and my ability to settle into Richmond. Uh, much easier than they normally would. I am a lifelong, in my short life, um, <laughs> bus rider. I always take public transit, and Richmond and the zero fare policy has by far been one of the most kind to me. Um, as a student who has no income, it was very helpful in going to get groceries, going to get furniture to move into my apartment, and you know, just getting to school functions, and then. Over the summer, when I was working at my own paid internship at the Federal Public Defenders, it was helpful to get to work all the way downtown while living pretty much all the way at the end of West End. And it also helped other students who came from out of state to Richmond as well, who were also at the internship to be able to get to work from their various accommodations. So because of that, and because of the uh, benefits that this has given to other students like myself, I would humbly ask that you do Continue the zero fit program. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the board. My name is Jay Green. Um, I am a constituent of the Ninth District here in Southside and serve on the board of the Iraq Transit. Uh, $776. The cost of owning my vehicle each month covering everything from taxes to parking fees, gas to insurance, and obviously my car payment. That's $9,312 a year. I'm very fortunate that I've had the opportunity to opt for life without the vehicle, bring up monthly costs, and now being able to put that money into my community. Mel from Blanchers makes my Americanos and Aaron over at Second Bottle. Uh, and Churchill knows how to pick out a solid red. I'm no longer working to live in this city, I'm working to truly experience it. Well, what does this mean to you? I make six figures a year, and I use it to be bus on average 10 to 15 times a month. Our lead times are the only reason I don't use it more often, but I'm here to put a face 
to your family. I'm also a father of a 10 month old baby girl whom I hope will see the benefits of public transit and one day help negate the stigma typically associated with bus ridership. I advocate on your behalf so that this amenity isn't overlooked, regardless of financial status. Extending free fare will show me that those efforts aren't overlooked. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Thank you, uh, Mike, and everybody else here who has spoken or represented those who have sent their information and emails. Um, know that your emails and your um, comments are not, uh, that they are taken into consideration as make decision. Um, approval of the November 15th, 2022 board meetings, board meeting minutes. Second. All right, move and second. <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 All right, consent agenda. There are five things here server hardware for data center, specialized transportation, scheduling software, copiers. All under Dexter Hurt. These are all contracts. And so you guys have a packet, you read over it. If you have any questions, Dexter is sick, and Adrian is here to answer those. Major change for January booking. I think we went over this already uh, last month, Cheryl, and um, um, now before us to consider and vote on. If you have any questions, Sam is here for that. And then the operation committee. I heard you guys went through the uh, agency safety plan. And um, if there are no issues with that, then we we're putting that in the consent agenda. Anyone have any questions about anything under the consent agenda? All right, hearing no questions, can I get a motion? So moved. All right, move by who? Second. And All right, Dan and second. Yes. Um, any questions, concerns? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, information items. Um, Tanya Thompson, uplisted, updated list of recent and upcoming activities. Antoinette Hayes, you're not Tony Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tony Thompson. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. The procurement, upcoming procurements uh, uh, report can be found on pages 67 through 69. Um, there have been no new projects added. If you, do you have any questions about the projects, please. Any questions? All right, thank you, Ms. Hayes. Thank you. All right, Ms. Ruffin, you're standing there for Ms. Tisdale. BRPT Compliance Review Report. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the board. Uh, I'm Sharika Luffin, Program Manager for Ride Finders, and I'm standing in for Ms. Fisdale this morning. Uh, the item that I'm referencing is on page 70 of your board packet. The compliance review is similar to the BRTC triennial review and is designed to ensure that the transportation demand management agencies like Ride Finders adhere to the policy and contractual agreement terms for appropriate usage of federal and state grant funds. This is the fourth satisfactory review right on the received with no corrective action required. We are pleased to share that with the board while also commending all of those who made it happen. We also wanted to give a special acknowledgement for a job well done to a young lady from the Mayor's Youth Academy who helped us uh, one week this summer where she uploaded the three years worth of documents to the auditor's court for us. Unless there are any questions, that can be my report. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Ruffin before she takes a seat? Thank you, ma'am. All right, staff reports, safety report, Mr. Carter. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. <clears throat> I'm giving the safety performance report for the month of November. Um, really didn't have a lot of change from the month of November versus the month of October. But we did have the same amount of external events. Um, we did notice a slight increase, a slight uptick in preventable type of accidents that could be associated with fixed objects. Um, there's a lot of construction going on, especially through the city and area. We're seeing things like mirrors hitting holes or fences and things of that nature. So we're reminding the operators to. Keep a look out for that type of thing. We are doing um, on call live radio announcements, just safety tips to remind the operators of what to do when they're out there. Um, 
Moving on to the specialized care, we also see a, a, a little bit of intake from uh, specialized uh, accidents. Tim and I had a conversation yesterday associated with that. Also, I talked with the general manager of specialized, and they are aware of that. And we're going to look at some things on how they're handling that. Might be a slight uh, adjustment when it comes to classification, those type of accidents and what they actually classify what's versus what are accidents versus incidents. But we're looking to that, um, but they are aware of what's going on. Um, verbal assaults, we did have one, as well as a physical assault. Um, we are looking in that. We got some information on that person and handling that with the uh, local jurisdictions. Other than that, we're maintaining, trying to keep everybody as safe as possible. And if there are no other questions, that concludes my safety proposed report for the month of November. Okay, any questions for Mr. Carter before he takes a seat? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Barham, service report, operator staffing. Operator staffing. Good morning, Mr. Chair, uh, friends of the board. And looking at the uh, operation stats for this current month, starting on page 76, uh, weren't any significant changes, but I do want to just point out a couple of things. Uh, one, the um, service uh, scheduled trips operated. Uh, we did see a slight increase in that. Uh, and on the specialized transportation, uh, since our new provider, National Express, came on board in October, uh, there has been a steady increase in the on time performance. Uh, there was an uptick uh, in the uh, number of complaints, uh, but we are addressing those. Most of those are late trips and, and, and things of that nature. Uh, so they continue to work on that. Uh, but basically, uh, as we continue to move through the operation, looking at our staffing, uh, as of end of November, with 231 full time, uh, 27 part time operators. Uh, we're now at, as of today, 234 full-time operators. Uh, so we did have a few operators graduate this past month. Uh, so unless there are any questions, I'll conclude my report. So, so you said you had a 17 in training? Uh, 17 as of November, now it's 12, because we did have five graduates uh, over the last couple of years. And you had 234? Yes, sir. So if you keep... Everybody you got at 12, then we two point six. Roughly. Uh yeah, but it's, it's, it's probably not happening. Yeah. No, no, no. We have you know, we have the you know, leave every month. Uh, I will say the past couple of months, uh, our our attrition rate uh, has been improving. So we haven't had as many people leave. Uh, of course, you know, like you said, you know, yes, we want to keep that number going up in terms of people that are coming in for training. Uh, speaking of which, I didn't mention that we are having interviews currently. Uh, for our next class, uh, which will start next month. So uh, we had 10 classes total this year. So uh, looking at next year, we probably will have at least that many uh, as well to try to get close to that 300 members. All right, so we are trying to do the best that we can to keep the people that we hire and, and keep the people that are employed. Yes, okay. Um, who is responsible for that? Retirement analysis that we received. Then we get a, I feel like we the got detail, a page, yeah. the, the detail about why the people were leaving. That's it. That's it. That's it. Um, that comes to HR and okay. we might compile the forms there. Okay. But you can that. Well, thank you. Because that was helpful to see some of the perspective. So, and we can keep that coming. All right. Any questions for Mr. Barn? Thank you, sir. All right, Mr. Bird, vehicle. Uh, facility report and maintenance staffing. And thank you as you come up for those of you. Uh, a couple of us took a tour last last month. I would um, I would share that I feel like if you're on the board, you need to take some time and go take a 15, 20 minute walk through with Mr. Bird. It's worth it. You know, to see what the operation is that happens with our maintenance and, and vehicle and fleet upkeep. Is uh is, is pretty pretty incredible. So um get with him. I'm sure he he won't mind taking a few minutes out of his schedule to walk you through a shop, visit people, and see what's going on with that. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the board. Uh maintenance report can be found on page 81 of the board's action. 
Uh, as of today, we only have two vacancies in maintenance, but we have two uh, interviews set up for today and tomorrow. So hopefully we'll be at 100%. We have that convert install and upgrades are at 98%. We should be complete with that by the end of next week. And that's the end of the next question. No, no. I, I mean, I don't have any. Just get us to 100%, Mr. Burden. <laughs> like then we're going to move you to some other shops. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any questions? All right, thank you. Sam, 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 Brothership Report. And Sam, just say what you asked your question about the major change. What were you saying again about Title VI or something? Just uh, there tell were me. no uh, district or disproportionate impacts to minority or low income populations. With the, uh, with the changes to January book. Correct. Okay, right, thank you. All right, morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. I'll be speaking to you the uh, information found on page 83 of your packet. Um, I just want to point out that uh, you'll see that we're kind of down month over month from October to November. That's very normal for this time of year. Uh, November's a shorter month plus the holidays. Um, this is well within what we expect to see. Um, but looking to pre pandemic and how we compare to November 2019. Uh, up 15 to 16 percent on our fix, local fixed route. Uh, we're down by about two thirds on express and uh, still down by about 30 percent on pulse. Um, also, now that we are five months into our current fiscal year, uh, it's you know worth noting that we are up a little over nine percent year to fiscal year to date uh, over 2020 uh, FY 22. So uh, that's encouraging, and we look to continue that growth. And that concludes my report unless there's any questions. Questions? Thank you. All right. Uh, Monica Carter, I had a comment. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. I'm going to be commenting on the reports found on pages 85 and 86 of the board packet. Um, as far as the right of comments are concerned. Um, for the month of November, there were a total of 122, which is actually a decrease from previous March. And then when we look at the trends as far as the um, verified complaints, um, unfortunately, we did have a bit of an increase in the rude operator scenario with the complaints, which um, once those operators are identified, um, that information is shared with transportation and they do all necessary follow up. Um, but on a lighter note, when it comes to no shows, there was a significant decrease, which we can contribute um, or attribute to um, improvements in the workforce. Um, and then, lastly, with accommodations, there were a total of three, actually four. Um, one of those um, that came in was regarding two separate operators and in, um, interactions with customer habits. Now. And the others were, well, one other was for um, customer service representatives. So that concludes my report. Did you have any questions for me? What's the process for rule operators? You said once they are, once they, it is identified, yes. then it'll be passed the transportation yes. and they'll be able to, what does that mean? So um, once the complaints come in, of course they're investigated. Um, say for example, um, you know, once we determine what bus it was and which operator was, you know, driving the bus, um, retrieve the footage, look at the footage. Once it's verified, then that information is handed over to the transportation department to in turn follow up with that operator to take any necessary um, action with that. Necessary. Okay. Yes. All right. Any other questions? All right. Quite good today. Thank you, Ms. Carl. Um, John Bailey, our financial report. And so Ms. Bailey is standing in. Um, John had death in his family out here. So if uh, he's watching, we send out our um, positive thoughts and support to John and his family. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members Good of the morning. board. I'll be presenting the financial report for the four months ending October 31st. Year to date actual revenues are 20.6 million. Our year to date actual operating expenditures are 19 million, which results in a Positive surplus of 1.6 million. Our balance sheet on cash flow remains strong. 
when their um, operating cash account six point four million. And if there's no other questions, this concludes my presentation of the financial report. All right, uh, hold on. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to go to you. What do you need done? I, I just think, do you think you need here for some support, maybe? I don't think so. Okay, all right. Well, we may call you back up. All right. Wait, did anyone, anyone have any questions as it relates to the financial report? All right, thank you. All right, let's move into committee reports. Mr. Engel for finance, and then um, uh, who's, the upper, who's the committee? Do we have a committee chair for our We do. The honorable Ellen <laughs> <laughs> okay. Congratulations, Chair, Ellen. Chair, yes. I was not present for the meeting, and I want to inform you that my dear friends and colleagues on the board appointed okay. me as chair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need okay. to be in present to right, right. That's what receive. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make that known to the board. Right, right. They don't show up. <laughs> we'll we make sure we we'll sure we document that in the meeting. You know, you know. But, but um, I think um, who was there? I was there? Okay, all right. So then give you know shares. So um, Engel, Engel, and then Smith, and then um, development and Smith in that order. So the finance committee met on December fifteenth. Um, we had a zero fare alternative study full presentation delivered to us. Um, we went into executive closed session. Out of our meeting, we came back with the recommendation for um, the full board to consider. Um, it is recommended by the GRTC Finance Subcommittee that the board of directors authorize GRTC to continue the zero fare program for the FY24 uh, with further consideration and study of subsequent following years. So we're, we're recommending uh, through the fiscal year 24 to continue zero fare. And um, we are still further studying the out year. All right, so we need to take it to a motion. Yeah, so second. All right, so the committee um, motion from Mr. Engel, second by uh, Mr. Saunders. Um, any questions, comments, concerns that we everybody understand through fiscal year 24, continuing zero fare, and why subsequently we still study its impacts as we move forward for years going forward. I see your face. You want to say something? Yeah, I think, uh, certainly based on the comments that we've gotten from our riders, um, <clears throat> I think they would like to. See it's obvious they want to see that continue, but I would think they would want it to continue even beyond. Mm -hmm. And so it's important to, to me that the board fully understand the impact of that on an annual basis and where, um, <clears throat> where those funds, the, the, the actual costs, yeah. where those dollars are actually coming from. So I think the finance committee went through and I think what we learned was, um, we're good for at least two years, and that subsequent studies will continue to show us where we are. But at least in the next couple of years, we're good. We say we're fair. So good I is good. I, I still think it's important that we understand the source of good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I could jump in. Oh, yes, sorry. Uh, so in our finance meeting, we went that some, I would say, kind of very good first level analysis mm -hmm. of how um, the cost of fare capture balance with fare, um, the, the total fares and looking at a, it was about a 10 year forecast of, of what the total net impact would be. Um, I think we came out of that with some additional questions as part of that analysis as to what assumptions went into how those, those final balances um, came to, how did the state uh, to set funds impact, um, you know, there were there were some things in the model that we wanted to see um, how much you know variation there would impact the total uh, at the end. But I think um, Dan, you know, 
made some strong comments about, you know, it, it's clear that within the system, we have the ability to continue this, or at least the next, you know, motioning now to continue it, ask that the budget be prepared to continue it into the next year. Um, don't think we're looking at a, an immediate fiscal cliff, but before we commit to it as, as a, you know, standing policy, uh, there's some additional analysis to see so that we can do that in an informed way. Our current position, our estimated revenues and our estimated expenses leave us in a confident position that we're good for 2024, but we do have some um, more study to do on the out years and how that would be funded um, because there, there does appear that there could be some gaps in out years. But right now, our current position where we are with the funding that we've already received or that's committed, our revenues that, um, are expected from all of the sources that we have outside of the fair and our expenses leave us confident that we're going to be in a good position for 2024. Is there any conversation about the immediacy of the continued study um, of how soon and how quickly we would study the almost two years? No, we are well, right now, we believe that we can have a recommendation um, at least by September on the out year. So we're going to be studying that in the meantime. That's one of the things that we'll probably be looking at the hardest in the committee. And we had, um, what's the name of the company? Yeah, uh, so we, we had outside um, third party consultant who they looked, at, they looked at this for us. You were going to say something? I think one of the calculation challenges we have is frequency of routes we already have. Currently, what we are at statically with our current operations and network, we see the confidence of moving forward. But with BRT North South, future expansion of other routes, and addressing for an increased frequency, the ability of expecting that managing those costs for the future is lower, uncertain. It's not about details of yes or no, it's about understanding what we're actually committing to for fair freedom and proceed moving forward. And it was more about making sure we have our revenues outlined as well as our plans and costs because we're negotiating a lot of other adjustable costs as well. And those are things that have to be calculated with that too. So we're just trying to make sure from the conversation we had that we're putting this body and this board in the best position to achieve it. Wanna follow up question, Mr. Chair. Um, as we move through making this decision uh, beyond the fiscal impact, the actual riders and perhaps having more detailed information by route as to the ridership on each one of their bus routes so that if we make the decision to change, we will know what bus routes will be by riders more adversely impacted. <clears throat> Okay, so I apologize. I should have, what I should have done is two things I, I need to keep in mind. We have a nine member board. Most of our committees have five people. So it's easy to assume that everybody is already a part of the conversation. So I apologize um, for assuming that you knew more about this. And then second, I should have just asked for discussion before a few minutes ago. Um, we didn't vote as a group yet though. So it was a motion made in a second. Those who made the motions, are you good with your motions? And second, all right. Uh, all, so now we've asked the comment. I mean, we've asked for comments, critiques, etc. Um, all in favor? Uh, uh, in your post. All right, good. Thank you. Uh, Operation committee. Yes, sir. We, um, as my colleague stated, we met on Thursday, December fifteenth at one thirty. And so did you guys really? We did, yes, sir. You did make a you really the make a first to topic I'd like to, to share with my We are such I guess from now on, don't miss in this open meeting. Such, yeah. such <laughs> confidence, but we really we did have a discussion about it, and in our. It, we, there was a hundred percent agreement, Mr. Chair, and and my colleagues on this board know my feelings on it, of the excellence in um, in work that this board has done, even in a short time, with this three jurisdictional change, and in in our effort to we discussed in our effort to continue striving towards that and that collaboration to have equitable leadership, and we discussed the fact that this board is currently chaired and vice chaired by Richmond and Rico, and our finance committee is chaired by Chesterfield and Rico, 
And we felt really strongly that our operations committee should be chaired by Richmond and Chesterfield in an effort to continue to show and work towards that equitable split. So in our in full confidence, yes, Ms. Robinson was duly elected unanimously, <laughs> unanimously, <laughs> without reservation or, or further discussion. So congratulations, ma'am. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Dave was elected as our vice chair. Um, and then, Mr. Chair, we uh, went through a, a, our agenda was was robust, but it was a very just good discussion. We had an operations report, which we went through some tracking on some class op on class graduation rates, turnover ratio, really good information with regard to operations and personnel. Uh, went through a maintenance report, and as you can tell from the maintenance report today, uh, really stellar work coming out of the maintenance department and the numbers and the vacancies and the, and the, the, the progress of the maintenance department is, continues to be stellar. We did review that agency safety plan, which we just saw on the consent agenda um, and the timelines that it was due by. Um, this organization has been ahead of that. Um, and that, that agency safety plan, I can tell you from the committee work is in very good shape. We reviewed the current agency KPIs. When we see all these reports and these key performance indicators, uh, they haven't been updated in quite some time. So this committee will continue to do some work on look at those KPIs and identifying if they need to be adjusted. What are our target goals? What can we hit? What's attainable? What's not attainable? And what makes for a good or a bad KPI? We discussed the exit interviews, as you mentioned, Mr. Chair, we went through those uh, in, in depth and can ask for continued tracking on those. So we continue to read those. And that led to a discussion on retention tracking. Well, again, like you said, about retaining what we have. Um, it really led into the other business piece of our agenda, talking about a personnel discussion, where we talked about recruiting, retention, and rewarding, and how it all comes together on how we're going to recruit new personnel, retain the ones we have. And the, the, we closed the meeting with a discussion about how this committee, uh, this operations committee, can discuss those personnel and operation needs and provide those needs to the finance committee to make decisions on what's affordable, what's not, and what can be done to support the organization as a whole. So. I'll close by saying I think the committee did great work. We went through years, years of operator retention studies. And I think you're going to see recommendations come out of this committee that the finance committee can then study for implementation on how this organization moves forward. And then the final thing I'll say is I, I think the work of these two committees, I know it's been short-lived. The finance committee I sit on and I'm on the operations committee and I sit here with this group. And I'll tell you that that work being done behind the scenes make this make these meetings very effective. Thank you. I'm sorry, did, Dave, did I miss anything from that meeting anybody that was on that committee? It, I'm sorry, the committee's Barb, Todd, myself, Ellen, and Dave. Anybody else want to add anything? Any questions? Yeah. I said, I'm not on development, I'm not, I'm not on operations, but I am on finance. And I agree. I mean, the level of digging into that we can do in those committee meetings, I think, are going to help us be better quickly so uh, thank you all right um barbara smith development we met on uh december 7th the development committee and discussed the title six impact evaluation mm -hmm. with january booking mm -hmm. as sam said there were no um, impacts or burdens identified with the changes uh, we also got an update on the zero fare study where that was um, and then we talked about a multitude of studies and projects that are underway, um, including the downtown transfer station, which is slated to open in April. Uh, we talked about the North South BRT study, which will be done in early fall. Uh, we also talked about. Um, when you say done, you mean the study will be complete? Complete okay. in nine months. So in the fall. Um, and we also talked about um, zero emission vehicle study, which is underway, facilities master plan, the neighborhood transfer station study, dedicated lane study, and the microtransit study, which um, DRTC was successful in getting a DRPT grant for the first pilot, which will, money was already set aside for that pilot, but this will help sustain the pilot longer. So we're really excited about that. So can we pause right here because that actually um, doing her report to talk about that. Um, do you want to talk about that or do you want to get Adrian to talk about that? Um, so it was, it was news yesterday and today, Adrian. So just tell us what did we hear publicly. Sure. Uh, 
we applied through the chip program and for the state funds, it's about six and a half million dollars we've been looking at for three years um, for five zones. And we ended up getting three zones. So uh, Henrico, um, Chesterfield, and then Sampton, um, the new as well. So two of the zones, uh, Palatine and Ashland, were not included in funded through the trip program, um, but we are seeking other funds for the demo grant on the state as well. Um, but yeah, so we ended up getting $4 million, which is pretty good, um, six and a half million dollars. So like Barb said, this is going to help sustain it. We had already kind of earmarked some of those $4 billion. Dollars. This will um, go further. Great. Thank you. Yeah. That's all I have in my report. All right. Anybody have any questions about anything that we heard? All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, board committees. Just, just four months ago, we were floundering around talking about this. And now we just look at how quickly and how strong these committees have become. This is exciting. All right, interim chief um, question. I'm sorry, question for you, Sam, real quick. I'm sorry to interrupt the conversation. So how often, so this major change from January, so how often do we do major changes for booking? How often does it happen in a year? We have bookings uh, three times a year. Okay. Right now. All, right. All right. Thank you. Uh, interim Chief Executive Officer's <laughs> report. Anything? Uh, just briefly, excuse me. Um, and to follow up on that, mm -hmm. it doesn't always get, because we have a brief booking, we don't always get the change. Okay. Sometimes it's just for the operators to pick their run to give them an opportunity to try something different. Okay. Yeah. Um, the only thing I have is we received notice on December 2nd that FTA is conducting our training with you, and that is key for us here. So staff will be busy over the next month. They can get a lot of time. Everything is due back to them by February 3rd. So we will get busy <coughs> after the holidays, making sure we have all of our stuff for them to, to review. Normally they come on site, but this year they're conducting it virtual. So it's not exactly sure how this is going, but we'll move along with that. So that's how often does this happen? It was okay. delayed because of COVID, so it should happen last year. So it's going to happen. In so you've gone through this quite a few times, so we don't. So even though you have the interim in front of your name, you you you, you have this. Yeah. We're we're on top of it. Oh, yes, we have to be. <laughs> this is something that we, as long as we're in compliance, mm -hmm. it should be smooth. Okay. So hopefully that will be the case. And right. other than that, I just want to wish everybody a safe and happy holiday. All right, great. I don't have anything to report um, per se, but we do need to go into a executive session for personal. So, Lincoln, thank you, sir. I move that the DRTC Board of Directors hold a closed meeting pursuant to Section 2.2-3711A1 of the Code of Virginia for the discussion and consideration of effective candidates for employment as Chief Executive Officer of the Greater Richmond Transit Company. All right, second. All in favor? All right. Any opposed? Thank you. Moving into closed session.
the Virginia Freedom of Information Act, and whereas Section 2.2-3712 of the Code of Virginia requires a certification by the board that such closed meeting was conducted in conformity with Virginia law. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the board hereby certifies that to the best of each member's knowledge, only public matters lawfully exempt from the meeting requirements by Virginia law were discussed in the closed meeting to which this certifying resolution applies, and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered by the board. Witness the following vote of board members. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Oh, yes. Mr. Vice Chair? Yes. Go. Just yes. Go around, yes. 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 Right. Thank you. Um, I think this is all the business we have other than we we are having a um, we are having a personnel committee meeting tonight. Right, Bonnie? Is that right terminology? Personnel yeah. committee meeting. Yeah. We're having a personnel committee meeting tonight off site at the Fleming's restaurant at 7 45 p.m. We will call the meeting to order and then go immediately into closed session. Any other business today? All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And have a Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy Hanukkah. Happy New Year. Best this for the rest of us. Good old sign.